morning. Welcome. We're glad you're here. I say this every year, and it's, but it's true. It's always great. It's a great time of the year. It's a time when our entire association comes together here in Park City. Uh, we have a chance to reflect on the past season. We have a chance to look at where we are, and we have the opportunity to look to the future. And uh, as I talk today, I, I am going to review a little bit about where we, we were this season. I want to talk a little bit about our quad goals and then talk briefly about what our future looks like. 2011-12 was a magical year. It was an amazing week-to-week -week experience that started and sold in October where Ted and Lindsay won the opening World Cups and it just put us on a roll, put us on a roll that we've never been on. We, I mean, we won a World Cup or a, a major event in every sport we had 10, 10 athletes win 14 World Cup titles or World Cup uh, uh, overalls. Uh, 11, 11 athletes won 12 junior worlds. You can go on and on and on. You look at the individuals, you think about Lindsay. Lindsay has now won 53 World Cups. You think about the time that she's been involved in this program. She's been in this program 15 years, 53 World Cups. Just the physicality of doing that is an amazing, amazing accomplishment. Uh, great success with our Nordic program. Keegan Randall uh, won the ladies' women's sprint title. And that's really an amazing tribute to the people that put that plan together. That just didn't happen. That was a strategy. That was, that was an area of focus that Luke and our, and our Nordic, Nordic program put in place was to have success in, in sprint. We had two women, Kelly Clark and Hannah Carney, have 16 consecutive wins. Amazing. It goes on and on and on and on. So uh, that's, that's something that we should reflect on because that's what this organization really is all about. Providing a positive environment for young men and women to chase their Olympic dreams. And clearly, they're chasing and, and catching those dreams, which is fantastic for us and for our organization. But again, none of this would happen if it weren't for the people sitting here in this room. Our parents, our volunteers, the foundation of USSA, the foundation of Olympic sport, working closely with their clubs and local programs, and in turn working closely with the staff and the leadership here in Park City. It's a great company. And what's, e what's even better is the best things are yet to come. Our future is in front of us. Switching over and looking at the business side, looking at, at the enterprise side, uh, this was a difficult year from a financial standpoint. When we closed the budget a year ago, we had some significant challenges. And, and uh, we faced potential cuts, um, but I'm happy to report that we had a great effort on, uh, from our sales and marketing team. Our foundation had a good year, so we really had year-over-year -year growth, which ultimately resulted in a small surplus. That's the 15th time in the last 16 years where we have had an operating surplus, and we're, I'm excited about that, and I'm proud of that because it demonstrates our ability to manage resources effectively and, and take care of monies that are, that are uh, either donated or, or put into our corporate sponsorship programs. Um, we continue to receive good support from the United States Olympic Committee. Our partnership there is very strong. I think they look at us, look at us as one of their premier NGBs, and, and uh, when they do best practices, they look at USSA. Uh, we were fortunate to have uh, seen new sports in freestyle and snowboard, women's ski jumping added to the Olympic program. And again, those things just didn't happen. Those happened because a lot of work on the part of our staff and volunteers went into making that happen through the International Ski Federation and then finally with the IOC. Um, we've, we've just recently hired a new vice president and chief marketing officer, Mike, Mike uh, Jaquit. Uh, we're very excited about Michael coming on board. He has a long history in skiing, uh, very, very good business career, and he's going to be able to take our sales and marketing program and run with that 
and uh, we'll be looking for we'll be looking for record numbers next year. So this has been a successful year, one that that uh, provides us the direction and the platform from which to which to launch ahead, and uh, and see where we end up in the next two or three years. As we look at our quad, every every after every Olympic Games, I sort of outline three or four areas that I want that I want the company to focus on. Uh, clearly. We talk about this being an athletic organization, so we always focus on our elite programs. We spend a lot of time working and talking about development. Uh, we have made investments in what I call infrastructure, and then finally taking a real long look and looking at what we need to do with, with, with our endowment program. Our elite programs, as I've already mentioned, are filled with tremendous athletes across the board. We have people that can compete day in and day out, uh, they have a track record of success. The future is bright. I think our challenge with that group is to make sure that we stay focused, make sure that we keep our eye on the horizon. Don't forget, don't forget the work and what it took to get where we are. Development. I think maybe development ha is and has always been one of our biggest challenges. Historically, we've talked about it. We've planned for it. But we have never realized and put, it, put into place a development program that we can really say is best in the world. It happens for a lot of reasons, mostly because of the ups and downs of the economy and our inability to allocate resources development. But we're at a critical time right now. We're at a critical time as we look forward past 14 out to 18. And we have to have the discipline to not only have a great development plan, we've got to have the discipline to fund it. That means that we have to make some really hard decisions as it relates to resource allocation. But I am determined that we are going to put in place a development program that's going to be the foundation for continued success as we go into the future. Now let's talk about what that means. From a philosophical standpoint, that means bringing the, bringing the best young kids together so that they can train, work, and compete. The best young kids at each age group. Not an, not, not an original thought, but one that we are going to implement. And it's going to be, it's going to be one that's built on a foundation of continuity and consistency. And as I look at where we want to go with it, the expectation is going to be Olympic success. The expectation is going to be Olympic success. That's really important that we all think about that. We got the best in the world because we focused on that. We all had, uh, hopefully most of us attended our club excellence program earlier in the week. And I was really excited about uh, what our staff did there and the, and, the, and the materials they put together, particularly the club handbook. That club hand, handbook really represents the uh, structure and the architecture for a successful ski club. If all of the clubs are willing to put the time and the effort into their organizations as outlined in that document, then you're going to have a really, really good organization. I mean, we're talking about best practices. We're talking about evaluation, certification of coaches, skill development. The most important thing that we can do at the local level is, is skill development and talent identification. The next step up are regional programs. We've long had our regional programs that have had a varying level of success. We're going to spend some time and effort. We're going to provide stronger leadership, better coaching, quality training. We're going to strength, strengthen the competition schedule so that we have more head-to-head -head, head -head races among, among the competitors out there in the field. We want to find out who's the best, but they've got to, they've got to do more and more head-on-head. -head. Another really important part of our development program is USSA Academy. We've been talking about this for a few years. We outlined it a year ago, and now we are in the process of finalizing and preparing to open USSA Academy up this fall. This September, we will enroll our first class. And I'm really excited about this particular part of our 
program, part of our infrastructure, because what it's going to allow us to do is bring the best kids together, put them in an academic situation, and we believe that athletics and academics uh, coexist and that, that uh, um, academics actually enhances our athletic performance. We are, we are excited because we have an athletic development pipeline and now we're going to have an academic pipeline which lays right over the top of the athletic pipeline. So at the end of the day, a young person that gets into our program is going to have a great athletic experience and at the same time when they're finished with their skiing careers, they're going to have a degree and a great future. In addition to the, the academy, uh, other elements of our development program, we've talked about infrastructure. We've talked about this, what, what, what the Center of Excellence has meant to us. The Center of Excellence really has exceeded, I think, all of our expectations. It's the heartbeat beat of the organization. It's a place where business is done, athletes train, athletes rehab, athletes are going to receive an education. This is a place that we need to use even more than we do now. It's one of the reasons that I'm really excited about the Academy it's because it's going to bring all of our best people together and, and, sh and share and compete with, each other, uh, compete with each other. This past fall we opened up the U.S. Speed, Speed Center at Copper Mountain. This has long been a, a, a dream of ours to have great early season training. We can't have great programs and great athletes unless we, we prepare them properly. And with, Copper, with, with the Center of Excellence, with Copper Mountain, everything that we've got there, you can train and, 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 and ultimately compete in a safe, world-class environment that's really going to prepare all of our athletes, elite as well as development, for their ongoing career and, and, and for that annual uh, competitive experience. If you look at, at, those, at those venues, then you combine that with what, what exists at Vail, what exists at Loveland, uh, and then think about all of those areas that run World Cups, that run our NORAMs and nationals and local races, our infrastructure is there. It's in place. We have, we have the talent. What we've got to do is make sure that we're identifying the right talent, that we're leading that talent, and that we're managing that talent so they can ultimately reach their full potential. I'm excited about this development program. Uh, it, again, and I'm repeating myself, it's something that we've talked about for a long time, and it's something that we are going to make happen over the next three years. As I, and as I talk about the next three years and I look into the future, again, on the business side, on the enterprise side, the success that we had this year, the growth was there, we had good success, but what it really did, the success provided opportunity for us to really grow in terms of sales and marketing as well as with our foundation. We can see significant growth in our revenue streams and that only is going to, that, that bodes well for what we're doing down, what we're doing in the next couple of years. At the same time, I've talked about the academy and the importance of education. We're developing plans to put into action another endowment, to build another endowment. And that endowment will be strictly dedicated to education, to helping kids in the academy, to helping kids uh, with their college and university education, and to helping the development program, just funding athletic parts of the, of, of the, uh, of the development program. From an athletic standpoint, the next three years are probably some of the most exciting that we've had in our history. 2013, we have world championships. 2014, we have the Olympic Games in Sochi. And 2015, we have world championships, and specifically the Alpine World Championships in Vail, Beaver Creek. We have the athletes that can compete and be successful in all of those events. We just need to continue to provide world-class support. We need to meet their individual needs. We have to make sure that each of those athletes has everything that they need. 
winning at the international level, winning at the world class level, winning an Olympic medal takes an unbelievable commitment, unbelievable resources. We have to deliver. But at the same time, I'm going back to development, we've got to identify and start to train our 2018 Olympic team. Where is that group? We know they're out there. Our development staff is charged with finding, identify, or identifying, training, and bringing that group, start bringing that group to the top so that by 15, 16, we can already see where we're gonna be. We've talked about the tools. I just mentioned the tools that we're putting in place. We need to make sure that we use them. We need to make sure that we stay the course and, and by building stronger partnership. Partnership locally, partnership among the clubs, partnership between Park City and the entire organization. Build a stronger community. Build one that, that's positive. Build one that believes in each other. We do that but it can be closer and it can be better. Now's the time. Now's the time to challenge ourselves. And I talked about this, I've talked about this over and over through the years. I've talked about it with our staff this spring. The time that you challenge yourself, the time that you ask yourself and question what you're doing is when you're having success. Because it's very easy when you're successful to take for granted the results that you're getting, the results that, that you're bringing home. We have a tendency, organizations have tendencies. I saw it when I was the athletic director at the University of Colorado. The, the administration started to take for granted the success that we had, and it slips, it slips like that. And once it's gone, it's, it's, it's really, really tough to bring it back. So let's don't forget, where, how we got where we are. Let's not forget where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. In closing, a couple of thoughts. Our vision won't change. Best in the world, in 1997, when we put that up on the wall, who would have thought it? But we got there. We got there because we took the time to plan, we took the time to evaluate, we focused, and we pushed ourselves. And it's amazing what you accomplish if you focus. An old Bill McCartneyism is you, you achieve what you emphasize. And we will not go away from best in the world. We will continue to raise the bar. And a couple of thoughts. I was reading some quotes last night. Pat Riley, the great basketball coach with the Lakers and now with the Heat. He said, excellence is not a destination. It is a process that must continually be improved. Think about that. What he's really saying is, you're never there. You get the best in the world and you celebrate and it's important that you celebrate. It's important that individuals celebrate. It's important that the organization celebrates. But then the first thing you ask yourself is how do we get better? And it's that process. It's that will to prepare. The will to prepare to win. That's the hardest part. The competition and, 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 and the winning is hard, but the will to get there is the hard part. And then he said, let's go beyond being the best. Let's go so far we leave our footprints. And I really like that one. That means we're gonna put, put a foundation under this organization that's gonna stand the test of time. It's gonna be a foundation that everybody can go back to. Gives them a sense of security, a sense of future. That's what we wanna do. We wanna make this organization best in the world. Again and again. And I believe that the people in this room are the people that are gonna get that job done. I have tremendous uh, respect for our staff. We have an outstanding staff in every department. They do great work. 
The thing that's really great is that we can count on you, count on you to bring your best, count on you to uh, live our vision, mission, values. It's just a wonderful organization. And uh, I'm proud to be the president and CEO, and I'm looking forward to another great year. Thank you all very much. Thank <laughs> you.